The thing about duck eggs is, other than it being a negative thing f- in cricket, if you if you prefer duck eggs, they're kind of cute, <laughs> and they'll work for you. Different flavor, pro- a little bit of a different flavor profile compared to the normal chook egg, but yeah. I'm happy with it. I don't think I've ever tried one. Of that. <clears throat> like they've got, like anything, they've got telltale differences between the sizes of the eggs and whatnot. They're a bit more longer. You can get a bit more, you know, egg whites out of it. Stop it. Bit elongated. Yeah, it's it's a bit. You know how like my head's big this way. <laughs> yeah, it's like an egg. It's like a duck egg. It's yeah. like, compared to the regular nude nut chook egg. All right, fair enough. Fair enough. A bit longer, yeah. I get you. Yeah, it's good shit. Um, very happy. Welcome back to another episode of Limb Podcast, episode 5S, <laughs> 55. <laughs> Sounds like your grade 5 fucking class, you know, when you were... 5S. Like, yes. Yeah, you know how they always had a letter after your class? Yeah. Like after your year? Was it <laughs> S because of the teacher's initial for their last name or were they going like a b d a b c d e f g or like because it was I that certain block it's probably depended on each school but i think most of my the school i went to went alphabetical we never had an s that's for sure that's a lot of classes <laughs> you need a lot of kids yeah no that, that never happened <laughs> fuck That's a lot of classes. Yeah, what's well, 24 times fucking... What is it? 20... Maybe, maybe in Japan. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. But yeah, we're back in stew, feeling good. Um, currently in the process of tearing this cunt of a joint down. Pulling everything out, going to paint everything, rip up all this carpet that's just been, you know, just misused for years. Um... And yeah, finally make a bit of change around here and clean it up and get the fuck out. Get the fuck out. Which makes you think, hey, like, why don't I just do it anyway for me? But it's like, oh shit, we're moving. Don't want people to move in here and just go like, yeah, it's haunted. Yeah, um, it's gross. (laughs) It's a cattleman's hut that's like a hundred years old. You get what you're given. But here's Mm. some new floors, here's some new paint on the walls. (laughs) Yeah, at least you're putting in an effort. You could just sell it if you want to. Yeah, as is. But yeah, man, look, there's a lot of incense soaked in this paint, so... <laughs> probably see dust come out. A lot out of things little, soaked in this paint. little smoke cloud come out when I take the roller up. And <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Oh, yeah, that's the, um, the cannabis incense from... What do you reckon Your this local stuff's going to be like to paint, mate? <sighs> the roof, a bit dangerous. Like, definitely in there. Like, I reckon if you just put your finger onto it, like, it just push through like a wafer. Like, nice and soft like a wafer. I wouldn't be looking forward to all these cracks here, you know. Mmm. It's warped as well. Mm. Like, this, this wall's fucking like... <laughs> <laughs> Like Tony Smith and the new fucking <laughs> Creek Adventure that you did, that you did. Yeah, yeah, that's coming out soon. Couple of Ducatis, couple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, you've been killing it land base recently, eh? Well, I didn't in that one, but I have in other sessions. Yeah, having good innings. Few good ones, yeah. yeah. You went to um, White Patch Brobby on the uh, past weekend, yeah. Past weekend, yeah. Um, yeah, we got a few fish. Picked up probably, I don't know, between us all, maybe eight whiting, and then a couple brim, and a good flatty. Just found that nice little estuary bread and butter kind of. Yeah, it just had that little nook where all the bread and butter species were sitting, I suppose. <laughs> Nailed it on the LV2. <laughs> yeah, 
That's good, good fun. Yeah, that was a good flooding, man. Yeah, he was having a pool. What'd you get into it? What'd you get him on? Uh, bloodworm. Bloodworm. Yeah. What well, dead bloodworm? Because they didn't have any liveies. But that that um bait shop, I believe it's called um Island Island Fishing Supplies. At um Bankshire there, just before you go to White Patch, it's near the Woolworths. Fucking very nice bait, always good quality. Bit better than the um commercial tweed. Oh, definitely. It's like Bit fresher. It, it's like you know how all around ah all around angle is always way better quality than everywhere else. It's like that, man. Like you don't put a pilly on and within five seconds it's falling off your fucking hook. <laughs> nah. It's all fresh. Nice. It's all good shit. And majority of the time he has live worms. Sand worms, blood worms. Yeah. Good shit. Do you reckon that he's doing the work to get them? I don't know. He's probably got oh, a he's deal got with a, someone. Got a, got a bloke that's really just a good bait collector and got that good middle man. And like he's the middle man. I'm not sure what the situation is. I'd say mm. he's probably getting, like, his fresh prawns and stuff probably from the trawlers or something like that. I'm not sure. But, like, it's all good shit. It's all, like, it's probably, like, it's the best bait I've been able to find around, especially on the island. Fuck yeah, especially, like, go on, the, the classic servo prawn or something like that. You know, that they've got something in that mixture that makes those cunts' heads go black real quick and really smelly really quick. Whereas you get a fresh prawn and you can leave it in the sun for a bit and you're just like, oh, yeah, it's like kind of cooked. It's a quarter cooked prawn. <laughs> but it doesn't, like, doesn't go gross. And I understand, like, you know, commercial fishing baits that sell in vast majority of areas just the fact that they are everywhere means that the quality is going to be a bit lower than when you find these specialists oh, that get the good shit wrong. I'm glad to have them around <laughs> yeah oh it's it's handy but yeah I don't mind me some tweed if we well, if we don't have any fucking nets or anything to catch liveys with yeah and like I don't know I just thought I'd give him a bit of a plug because it was fucking every time I go there it's really good quality and you're catching pretty good species from land-based, mm. which I've had mixed results with land-based. I've had mixed results in the boat, but <laughs> we usually get something. Yeah. That's just how it is, land-based sometimes. Sometimes you get them, sometimes you don't. It's like fucking Bending Creek from the, from the land. Yeah. Me well, and you hit three floodies in half an hour. And every I'm time I haven't hit a flatty since I've been back. Like I've been there probably four or five times again since that. Like since that day, and I haven't hit a flatty from the land again. We'll say this though: the traffic there since that video dropped has picked up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> like I've, when we go past there in in the boat, there's always someone there. Eh? Yeah, well, I think it's pretty. I don't know. It's a nice, it's a nice sandbar. It's a nice part of that creek. It's a good spot, like structurally. There's and heaps of stuff around. And it runs like fuck, and you can fish that deep gutter because it's right in front of you, or you can try and get up on the sandbank. Yeah. But it runs so much through there. It does. Lose your mind, kind of run. <laughs> Biggest jig head fucking weight you've got, kind of run. <laughs> Send the cunny in. Yeah, it does get a bit difficult at times. But yeah, that's why we're switching back to fresh. We're going to go try some fresh on Friday. I'm going to try and procure a bass on top of water because that looked fun. Yeah, fuck yeah. It was good. Keep seeing it, eh? Like, I must be liking heaps of that shit. So my algorithm's like, here's some more top of water fishing. <laughs> it's always blokes with like those Billy Goat Seamans or those finesse fucking pop frogs or yeah. um sugar pens yeah not sure which band do, brand does that it might um, be wilson or zeric nah it's uh i think it's called bastet bastet yeah 
Best I should have been or something well, like that. Anyway, they catch them fuck tons of, like, you know, sizable, decent species out on that waterfront. It's got bass in the name. I don't know that, in the brand name. Just can't quite remember it. We'll just call it bass. (laughs) MMD splash balls. Yeah, they're killing it. Mm. I I only hear good things about it, put it that way. They've nailed the action and the sound. And the splash. (laughs) And the splash. And they're so easy to use, man. That's what else they nailed. The fucking. You don't need it. So easy to use. Remember when Jake got those fucking. Largemouth bass baits with that DVD instructional video from like fucking, I don't know, 2002. <laughs> and he's like, you have to do these certain retrievals. And the one that I remember the most is the spastic swim. He's like, pick the lure up, drop it down, two jigs to the right, and then up. And it's like, oh, fuck. Like, well, if you have to do that for your lure to work, come on. <laughs> Two jigs to the right and then up. He'd be like, lift it, ba ba ba. If you want to get real crazy, like, okay, <laughs> but I've I've just slow reeled the paddle tail <laughs> and had a, had a big dog flatty. I've just cast, I've cast my lure at it in skip and just walked the flats back in doing this and got my biggest fucking flatty yeah. ever. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. For some of the custom colours in the whole production. We were do. We might um we'll film a little um demonstration to show you how much oh, these no, things lot. fucking glow up. They glow up so much. Throw in front of that lot and then turn the lights off. <laughs> yeah, l- let's let's have a little go. Damn. That's a new custom colour by Holt Productions, the Glow Prawn. And we're back. And we're back. Fuck, that was good. Yeah, they're pretty impressive, eh? Keen to flick them. Oh. <laughs> oh. I think that's probably your favourite colour of the of the new custom colours. Yeah, fucking know. I've just got something about like casting a dark lure in murky water. Has to do with the sun. <laughs> um, sounds like the oven's cooked something, but we'll look into that later. What could that be? Mm, tandoori chicken pizza from the freezer. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of a cheat meal. I've been a bit lazy. <laughs> I got some. Um, I cooked up like this butter chicken thing last night, where I chucked in like peas, corn, beans, red cabbage spring onion just like heaps of different vegetables mm. pretty good Did happy with some it. sauce with it yeah um, butter chook sauce oh yeah nice nice that would have been good yeah so that was nice but yeah anyway um first round of NRL was on the weekend um pretty good footy like I'm actually quite impressed with how the referees handled most of those games. There was only one of them where I went like, ooh. Mm -hmm. But even then, for, like, all the other games to be a flowy arm wrestle was kind of enjoyable for me to watch. And that's the kind of footy I like, where it's, like, almost set for set kind of... I got real sick of, like, manly scoring five tries in, you know, 20 minutes, (laughs) and you're like, fuck, I'm on even... They're going to run it up even more. It's not worth watching. Whereas this year, a bit better. Don't fuck with the rules anymore. Yeah. Leave it for a bit. Yeah. I'm definitely... I was really surprised because I didn't really hear anyone complain about it other than me. But they fixed the problem with the six again rule. Finally. (laughs) <laughs> no, like, I complained about it heaps and I'd like I didn't like see any actual important people complain about it <laughs> if you know what I mean mm, but they'll 
They'll probably just like, oh yeah, we'll back their decision to change the rule and then it's a good thing that it's changed. But it was a bit much, hey? Mm. And no, it took, I'm took glad two years. Because now you, you get to have your kick when you're in your half, which is the right thing to do. It's cool. Stops the score from hitting like... If it's 30 to 6 by half time... You've lost me. Like, I've turned it off. Mm. And there was definitely, like, um, teams that were just giving away six agains instead of, you know, because they knew that, well, it's only going to be six more tackles right here. You know what I mean? Like, Which isn't good, but it's it's better than kicking it downfield. You'd rather six and again now, on your line than them scoring a try. Yeah, and now they <clears throat> they can't do that, which is good. So, I was happy about that. <laughs> Good shit. Standout player of the round? Um, probably either Appy Corosau or Cobbo. Even though Cobbo had those errors, he still looked good. I'm I'm gonna go with um, Kurt Mann. Bit bullish on him. Right mm-hmm. now, because he's just fucking, he's just laying it. He's laying cunts he's it. down. <laughs> he has been for a while. Yeah, he's good. Um, the results were a bit mixed, but kind of what I expected. A couple upsets, but yeah. We move, we continue. <laughs> we continue. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Um, Anything surprise you this round? Mm. Maybe the maybe the Knights. Like I knew the Broncos had it in them to put on a performance like that, but the Knights, I was like, oh, this might get dicey a bit. You know, twenty twenty five minutes into the game, but they stuck strong and they fucking outplayed a good team. Yeah. Fuck yeah. That's probably not... Up the nights. Yeah. It's good when they're going good, eh? <laughs> they just need to get Edric Lee back in that first grade side. Oh, I agree. He's been out for a while, but, you know, the old prophecy was until he plays for Queensland, we won't win another Shield. What happened? He played one game. He scored the match-winning try. We won the Shield. Best player of all time. He'll work his way in there, man. <laughs> yeah. He's good. Shout out Edric Lee. He'll, uh, he'll get the job. He'll he'll do the work and get it, get back in. Yeah, he's he's known for those one percenters. Well he's not a standout, but he just does everything. Mm. Mm. Very Safe nice. hands. You know, good finisher. Plenty of fucking ruck work. It's all you could really want. Mm. That's a um, that's a professional footballer. He's a footballer. This kid. This kid is football. <laughs> <laughs> Big duck egg. <laughs> and we come full circle back to the duck egg. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna hit half time. Half time hooties. Have you ever tried goose egg? Nah, never tried a goose egg. <laughs> is, it, is it fashionable? <laughs> is it fashionable to be eating goose eggs? Oh, I've never tried one, mate. Uh, you reckon they're sizable? I'd say they'd be similar to a duck. A bit more aggressive? In nature. If they, uh, Dude, if a goose gets you on the back foot, look the fuck out. <laughs> You've already lost. You've already lost. It becomes a game of you best run. Don't, <laughs> don't let him get you on the back foot, bro. Yeah, you gotta you gotta staunch. And that's where like you feed me this bullshit about toxic masculinity. When it comes down to it, if you don't flex, you that don't goose is gonna yeah, get you on the you back don't foot. Flex on that goose. If you don't flex on a goose, you're on the back foot and you're in trouble and you're in trouble pretty fucking quick and it's coming for you and you're not gonna be able to stop it and it will just It'll get it over you. It's much like a footy game or a fight. 
like if you if if it gets over you and you don't get back over it which if you're on the back foot like it's already over the top of you when it comes to goose it comes to the geese they'll run you down mate <laughs> they'll run you down geese will run you down <laughs> you just got to give him a solid head kick <laughs> he'll back off <laughs> yep same technique as your drop kick for a football field goal similar. i reckon similar fake the hands and then <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if you know how Theo did fucking with Bryce Mitchell, is that his name? Yeah. Um he did the how would you handle this deer? Imagine if it was fucking goose. <laughs> he wouldn't fuck around. <laughs> he'd let it come forward, extend the wings, he'd fake up high, shoot the double leg, and you know he's got good wrestling, so he's getting that take down. <laughs> and then that goose is in trouble. I reckon he wins by a rear naked choke. The goose is getting slammed on his head, mate. Right. That motherfucker would probably rip the goose's head off. He's that strong. <laughs> you We're going to get fucking you... monetized. <laughs> fucking goose fucking. Did you see what he did to Barboza? Did you see what oh, he did he to smashed Barboza? Barboza? He fucking bro. smashed Barboza. Smashed him. He dropped him. Mauled him. It was, a, oh, I reckon worse than what fucking Khabib t- did to him, honestly, but it's a little bit old, older, Barboza. But still, he's been lighting people up since he dropped down to 145. Mm. Look at the Burgos fight. Mm. That was the first time I've ever seen someone get hit, look okay, and just go like, oh, I've lost me compass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm down. <laughs> loss of compass. Delayed loss of compass. I've lost my compass. That's why I want to go one in my skin, so then I know, like, oh, well. North is that way. <laughs> actually, I think it's low over there, but... Anyway. Imagine that actually... That might be a thing in the future. Tattoos become, like, NFTs. And you you can get, like, a gif in your arm. <laughs> and it will be, like, a compass that actually works, like the ones on your phone. <laughs> be different. Wouldn't be true magnetic. Wait, is it magnetic north and then true north? I don't know, mate. Because there's like two different. Like there's North Pole and that other fucking thing that's above England, where the lizard people live. No, <laughs> I don't know, no, bro. No, no, no. Lost it. Okay, but yeah, we're back from halftime. Who don't we're feeling fucking good? Went out for a quick. Um, we practiced a couple of cutout passes. Breath of fresh air. Breath of fresh air. I threw a jab. Um, it didn't hit nothing, but it felt good to throw. <laughs> oh. Came back in here and then just thought like duck egg, geese egg, geese, back foot with a geese. It's got it over the top of you. Bryce Mitchell's a good fighter. Um, yeah. Whatever. Welcome to a Limba podcast. If this is your first time listening to the podcast, it's a bit nuts, isn't it? But yeah, we're here. <laughs> we're here for you. <laughs> How would you afford a giant salamander? I'd... High powered rifle would be the go to, <laughs> yeah. but if it was just hand to hand combat, yeah, you wouldn't want to get close. You, no, you'd need a spear because if it bites you, you get infected, eh? They've got that know, saliva that gives about... you a fucking nasty, um, nasty bacterial infection or some shit. Do you know what animal I'm talking about? Giant salamander, yeah. I'm going to have to have a visual of what it actually looks like because... I don't actually know much about them. Uh, So it could be what you're thinking of. I just don't know. I'm pretty sure they've got a fucking, like, a real nasty fucking... They live in water. And they can go on land, but they mostly live in water. Oh, fuck. These things get up to 30 kilos and (laughs) 1.2 metres. And the male, like it, 
am I fighting a male giant salamander? Yeah. They're known to be more aggressive. So they're going to try and get me on the back foot, right? And how you're do I, in, you're how do in I the water. And I'm, and I'm in a stomach, I'm in the water? They can come out of water, but I don't know if they're very good out of land, on land. Does it have gnarly claws? <laughs> I've seen them fucking, like, smash shit, like fish and stuff. They have a pretty gnarly bite. All right, I'm looking at a bloke that's got double underhooks. Look, give me a look. But he's kind of giving it a cuddle. It's not really an aggressive fighting kind of stance because that thing could bite his fucking face off if it mm. wanted to. They're kind of a weird creature, eh? Crazy. That's the craziest thing I've seen today. We'll, well put up. We'll put to up. Make, a, to make it interesting, you're in the water with it. We'll put up a poll on Instagram. Who would win in a fight, me or a giant salamander? Ryan's trying to sneak up on its hole. Oh, and it smashes amphibians. Does it? I'm not amphibious, though, bro. I'm fucking <laughs> I'm not <most>. amphibious. <laughs> What's its bite like? If it's got a decent bite, then I know how I'm going to play my cards. From what I've seen, it's got a decent bite. They've got tiny teeth. Yeah, that's right. But they've got a very muscular head. So... Whatever it bites usually can't escape its grasp. So I might have to do what <laughs> Vitor Belfort did in early UFC days and just lube up a little bit. No just leg locks. Lube up. So if it gets a leg lock, I'm fucked. Um, <laughs> I don't think it's going for a leg lock, bro. Look, man, I think... Am I allowed to use anything around me or is it just like fists? I'm like going to fight it. You just got to fight it? Yeah. All right. Look, I faint. I try to get it to charge. I sidestep. I go around the back of its head, and I'll drop it either a heel or a hard right hand, see if that does anything. Grab it by the tail. Pull the cunt up. Probably kick. Probably kick it. But how would I... I don't think I could knock it out. I think you just got to hold him up out of the water. But it's five foot long, Dinky. It's a big art. Oh, it's something like 30 kilos. 30 kilos is a lot to get above my head, and if it's resisting too. Oh, it'll be resisting. Mm, might have to go for a choke. I'm going to go for a blood choke. I'm going to lift the tail, land the kick on the head, and then dive in. But then it could bite me. Fuck. Oh, no. Put a pin in it. We'll come back to it later and I'll see if I can make something up. I don't know if I could beat a giant salamander, dude. <laughs> Especially in the piss. Like in we're, the we're piss. knee deep. Yeah. Knee deep in piss. That's a tough ask. Like it starts with you approaching the hole underwater. And then from there on out, it's pretty much you just trying to rip that cunny out of the water. Get it to the bank. And then I, then I feel like grab a rock. <laughs> Smack it in the head. Try and knock it out at least. Um, but what about letting your foe go? Let him go. Yeah. Be like, good wrestle, man. High five, fist bump. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm thinking maybe unanimous decision victory for me. Because mm. unless it bites me and gives me an infection and I get, like, a gangrene or some shit and I have to cut that arm off, then I don't really take it as an L. Yeah, I, I think I win by a unanimous decision. Or, back you to the original win. point, the original point was 22-250 high-powered rifle. Yeah, And true. that's that's a problem solver out of the bush. I don't think you're allowed to shoot your helmet. <laughs> 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 I wouldn't do that anyway. Keep your guns in the safe unless you're procuring meat for the freezer. That's my rule. Mm, meat. But yeah, food for thought. Yeah, food. what'd you do on a fight against food a giant food? Yeah, I'm thinking about food. Oh, yeah? I'm getting a little bit hungry, yeah. I always get a bit peckish around this time. You're like a chook. Nah, chickens don't think. <laughs> <laughs> 
Whereas I can make up my mind about what I want to eat. They don't think. No. They're kind of just like... <laughs> what? What a... What a... Seed, seed, seed. Worm. Worm. And that's that's what they're doing. That's what I think they're doing. <laughs> I don't think that that's They're little dinosaurs, man. So you're telling me that I have, like, a velociraptor just chilling in the backyard? True. All right, I'm going to name one of them Blue. And he's going to be my ride or die. But if he doesn't get five (laughs) foot tall and can bite a fucking giant salamander's head off, you're going in the oven. (laughs) If it's in shallow water, man, he'd give it a good poke. Yeah. Just stomp on it. <laughs> <laughs> I like to um, I like to fight a bass with a topwater lure, but we've already spoken about that. Um, yeah, floods are gone. Fish are back on. Fish are back on. I'm feeling good. When in doubt, yeah, about. Yeah, about. Oh, hot production swimmer on on a Monday, chicken to a hook. Yeah. yeah, that'll work up great work almost anywhere in work I think that maybe not in the drain not in the drain not in the drain what if you drop him what if it was a deep drain drop him down and dig him up see I like I like watching those videos of the the crazy people that are on they're not on the cocaine all the time they're taking advantage of the environment that they're in and they're catching like native and non-native species to the area in Florida in the drains because if you're not fighting and if you're not doing drugs all the time and you don't want to go to Disneyland or you're not just recently retired you're probably there to fish (laughs) yeah (laughs) well from our perspective anyway yeah Grab a rod and reel, do the deal, head to the creek. When you're at the creek, have a look around. Breathe it in, connection with the soil. Breathe out, go barefoot as well. Don't be a pussy. Stand on the mangroves, <laughs> fucking dare. Stand on the water's edge, unless you're up north, and then you fucking, you don't even fuck with that. There's dinosaurs in the piss, you're getting tinny. But if you're around this area, stand the mangroves. Breathe in. You cast one of these bastards out. You aim for structure. You get snagged. Tackle back. Tackle back don't work because it never fucking works. Especially if you're me. You know, maybe try and die for that lure, but if you don't want to, just, hey, write it off. It'll be okay. Rig up again. Cast again. Bang! Mangrove Jack. Bah. Hopefully that's Sunday. But, yeah. We'll let you know. You'll see it. Sunday fun day. Sunday Fundy. Oh, dude, did you see fucking t- Tony and Keith died? What? Yeah. Really? Dead. How'd that happen? Watch the new episode. They're drinking this weird new beer and then, psh, dead. Oh, yeah, I did see that. I thought, you know, maybe it might have been some Hollywood witchcraft. Or well, local Limber Lemons aren't spitting out the right amount of juices <clears throat> really maybe not who knows but yeah rest in peace Tony and rest in peace Keith have you ever had a, a local juice mm, yeah I like I like um, it's frowned upon but if there's just like a random one pound of strawberries or one just pineapple no, I might leave a dollar, but I'm taking it, <laughs> and I'll make me juice with that. Lemons, if a mate's got a lemon tree, I'll grab a couple of lemons. Yeah. Make use lemos. of what's there. Get some lemons in you. Yeah, with the fresh lemon, you can do a lot of things with the fresh lemon. Just be careful, because you might get the junky teeth and degrading the uh, enamel of the tooth, and it will wear your teeth back. So maybe don't drink lemon juice all the time, but no. it's good to have... Bit of acidity every day. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, mate, that's all from me this week. Well, um, 
We'll be back next week. Wrap up. Yeah, man. Yeah. Wrap that up. Like a prezi. Oh, Boto. Oh. Stay strong. Do it. Happy days. Um, learn how to fish, not how to steal cars. Restart. Stay strong. Hey, Denki. Hey, Keith. Episode 55 of the Limba Podcast is brought to you by TDK Collective. We've got some videos out. Got some more coming. Got some more coming. Got some merch in the barrel. We're just waiting to shoot. Local fishermen from around parts of South East Quay. And we're just out there and we're, we're, we're having a good time. We're procuring fish and we're living a nice lifestyle from nice the enough. creeks. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking... It's a good time, we enjoy doing it, so we hope you enjoy watching it, and yeah, it's fucking good shit. Dinky, it. Dinky where, where can you find us, about us? Where oh, can you find us? Pretty much everywhere, mate. Here, right here on this podcast, on the podcast. Um, Instagram, Facebook, t- we're on Instagram with TDK Collective, on Facebook we're Tony Keith. I'm still trying to change that. It just won't let me. <laughs> and, uh... Kind of locked it in Eddie, but okay. <laughs> also, you can find our videos on YouTube. Yeah. All the links will be in the description below. Fucking smash that like button. Hit that notification bell. Hope you enjoy. And thank you. Thank you. We are also brought to you by DJR Designs. With the Z... On Instagram, she does designs, she does artwork, she, she does sentimental pieces, she does logos, and just she, all sorts. She pretty much does it all, doesn't she, mate? Paints. You want this? You want this painting? Hit her up. She'll probably sell it to you. <laughs> yeah, probably. I love it, but she if you said, like, I'll give you 100 bucks for that, she'd probably sell it to you. It's good shit. Hit her up on Instagram at DJR Designs with a Z. Dinky. Yeah, get amongst it. She's a very talented artist and very committed to making you happy and getting you the the logo or design or painting or whatever you want. Getting it she's very committed to getting it exactly how you want it, so yeah. Hit her up.